RV living with pets can either be very difficult for both you and your furry friends, or it can be the best thing ever. It all depends upon how you prepare and what products you bring along to help making RV living with pets easier. In this video, we're gonna talk about traveling with pets and how to make it all work, so stay tuned. Welcome to the channel. If you are new and if you're a regular, well, welcome back. We've been traveling in our RV for four years now, and for the first few years of travel, we did not travel with our pets. We chose to have a pet sitter during our travels that would stay at our animals with our home base, but when we started traveling on a full-time basis, that was no longer an option. Now we have a home base again, but since we've learned how to make travel with the pets easy, well, we actually find it's easier to bring them with us than to try to have a pet sitter. Plus, since we do use our home base as a vacation rental when we travel on an extended basis, the pets have to come with us anyway. So we had to figure out how to make it work to travel with our pets and not lose our minds. So in this video, we're gonna share our top 10 tips and a few products that we've found make RV living and travel with pets possible. We also have all of this information on our blog about travel with pets, and there'll be a link for that blog post below, or you can go to gratefulglamper.com and click the blog. We have a large Great Pyrenees dog, also known as Alaska, and two cats. Now, Alaska is not exactly your typical RV size dog. So we frequently step over him to get to the bathroom at night, but we love having him with us. He's also a great companion for our son who really needs something consistent when we travel since things are always changing, but having Alaska along helps him to always have that same friend day in and day out. Tip number one, pet friendly stops. Rest areas with a pet walking area or a grassy area are a great place to be able to just take a quick break and let your furry friend have a little break as well. Most of the truck stops that we stop at to get fuel don't have the most pet friendly areas. So we tend to use rest stops because we have found that they most always have some sort of pet walk and just a great area to stretch our legs and also let Alaska stretch his legs. So you'll have to let us know in the comments below if you found some great pet friendly stops for those travel days, because other than rest areas, we've kind of had to improvise. So let us know what you have found out there on the road. Number two, make sure that you check the campground's pet policy before making a reservation. Now, we've not run across a campground yet that doesn't allow pets, but there are some that are out there. So make sure there are no pet restrictions, such as size and breed, before that you book that reservation. It's also a good idea to keep a vaccination record on hand in case you need it. Not that all campgrounds or any campgrounds would require it, but it's good to have on hand. And if you would need emergency vet care, the vet would want a copy of those records. Number three, use a pet monitor. Now we have found a few ways to monitor the temperature of our RV, but we have found the pet monitor from mywaggle.com does a fantastic job. Here is how it works. The Waggle RV pet temperature monitor works via built-in Verizon 4G cellular data to monitor the temperature and then alert you via the app text and email about any potentially unsafe conditions for your pet in an RV, car, or even your home. And no Wi-Fi is needed because it's using 4G cellular data. Now I can check the temperature of the RV at, at any time, but I don't have to worry about constantly checking in because my waggle will send me an alert if the temperature is out of range it also sends an alert if the humidity is out of range and it sends an alert if the RV loses power. Since we can't take Alaska with us everywhere we go, and for sure the cats are not coming along when we go exploring, the My Waggle provides peace of mind that the environment in our RV is comfortable for all of our furry friends. So the Waggle sits right up here and I can see on my phone real time 
what is going on in the RV. So currently it's a little warm in here because we turned off the air conditioner to film this video for you all. So 81 degrees inside of here right now, which isn't horrible, but that's actually out of the range that I have set on here for our preferences. So during this time that we're filming, I'm constantly getting alerts right now on the Waggle app, letting me know that it's over temp. So if we were away from the RV, I would know that we've got something going on where things aren't quite right and we need to get back ASAP to make sure the Alaska is okay. And we also want to say a big thank you to Waggle for being a co-sponsor of today's video. You'll find a link in the description below to get started with the My Waggle Pet Monitor. Number four, a foldable or collapsible kennel. Now, Alaska is an opportunist. So when we leave the RV for more than a few hours, we do use a crate for him. He tends to do things like eat the trash, or if there's something that is accessible, you just might find it gone by the time that you get back. So since he's a very low energy dog and tends to sleep most of the day anyway, even when we are around, having a crate that can fold up and be out of the way when we're not using it is perfect for RV living. And I'll put a link in the description below for the crate that we use for him on Amazon. Number five, a pet fence. Now, speaking of Alaska, funny story. When we were camping in northern Wisconsin this summer, one day, early in the morning, Alaska needed to go out after being inside with us all night. Now I'm still in my pajamas, not wearing a bra, no glasses, no contacts, and I have distance vision issues. So seeing you nice and close up front's no problem, but seeing out in the distance is a little bit tricky if I don't have some sort of vision correction. Well, I went to go let Alaska outside and figured I would just let him ride outside of our RV so I didn't grab the leash. Bad idea. Alaska saw some people sitting outside their camper way across the campground. And I do mean way across the campground. He decided he wanted to say hi. He literally bolted for these folks that were enjoying their morning coffee. Now, he would not come back when I called him. No, why would he do that? And so here I am running around barefoot, blind, in my pajamas, no brush teeth, chasing a 105 pound white furball. So, because I do not relish a repeat experience of that, we now have a pet fence that we can set up around the RV. He's not one of those dogs who tries to break down a fence or any sort of barrier that serves as a deterrent. So a huge thanks to FXW Fence for also co-sponsoring this video and sending us a fence. So I don't have to worry about chasing the dog around the campground in my PJs again. There'll be a link in the description below for the pet fence that we're now using. So this particular fence setup is super, super easy. It comes with 16 panels and then all of the poles to put the panels in place. It's very easy to figure out which direction the panels go. They either line up one way or another. And we literally set this thing up in less than five minutes. The poles that go through the panels actually have kind of a semi-pointed end where you can then sink them down into the ground. So the fence is nice and sturdy. If you've got a dog or a kiddo or something like that that's leaning against those panels a little bit, it's not gonna cause the whole thing to collapse in itself. This is perfect to put either around the RV to just create an area within your campsite where you can have your dogs just little, you know, run around off leash. It's also a great option if you have got littles that you're traveling with and you wanna just kind of create a little bit of a barrier around your campsite for your littler ones so that they kind of have an area that they can play and you don't have to worry about them kind of wandering off the campsite. So super happy with this fence from FXW. Huge thanks to them for co-sponsoring today's video. Number six, hands-free leash. Now, I really enjoy a cup of coffee in the morning once I'm fully dressed with my contacts in, taking a walk around the campground. And trying to carry my coffee and have a leash in my hand means, well, 
I need a third hand if I need to pick up any poo or anything like that. Having a hands-free leash helps with being able to enjoy my coffee while walking the dog and still having a free hand for whatever I might need it for. Remember, Alaska can be an opportunist. I'll put a link in the description below for the hands-free leash that we use that we got on Amazon. Number seven, a spill-proof water bowl. Now, we use this for both the cats and the dog. They actually share water, unlike my children that would drink out of the same thing, which for whatever reason, they can't do that. But the animals, they'll drink out of the same dish. So even on travel days, this particular design keeps the water in the bowl and not all over the floor, which is obviously a plus when you're RV living. Number eight, a flea and tick collar. Now, traveling from place to place means different types of pesky critters that could be out there. So a flea and tick collar helps us to make sure that Alaska's not bringing in any unwanted guests inside of the RV. Plus it just helps keep him healthy as well. So that is an absolute must have, especially when you're traveling. And I'll put a link in the description below for the flea collar we use. Number nine, make sure that you know who your closest emergency vet is so you know where to get help if you need it. VCA is a great veterinary network that is nationwide and has over 6,000 veterinarians and more than 600 board certified specialists, as well as a thousand plus animal hospitals located in 46 of the 48 states and in some Canadian provinces. So I'll leave a link below where you can look at the VCA website and you can look and see if there is a VCA near the areas that you plan to travel. Number 10, know before you go. <laughs> Many national parks only allow dogs in the visitor center or parking lot areas, but not on the trails. So you can use the NPS app to check rules at national parks for dogs. State parks or other areas can have similar rules. So there's a great website called bringfido.com, and I'll link that in the description below, that can help you find some of those dog-friendly locations so you don't show up with your furry friend only to find out that they're not allowed. There are so many great benefits of traveling with pets. They're a great conversation starter. We always get asked about Alaska when we're out traveling and walking around the campground. And speaking of walking around the campground, having a pet with you actually can help you get out and move more. You tend to move around more during those travel day stops. And hey, the companionship, well, we think it's pretty awesome. So even though it can take some extra effort and some extra planning, we totally think that it's worth it now actually traveling with our pets versus without. So don't forget to go check out the blog on the website where we have all of this information and more. Also, don't forget we now have merch where you can show off that you also prioritize experiences over things. That's on our website as well. So this is an actually, this is actually, I can't talk. It's okay, I'm just showing them there. Uh oh. It's not on him. <gasps> I'm gonna put a link for another video about traveling with pets right over here. And then I'll put a link for some videos with just fun places to see in general over here. Don't forget to check us out over on Instagram here and hit that subscribe button over here because we have got a ton of fun videos up and coming and you don't want to miss a single one. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, we'll see you in the next video.